Good morning. Happy Sunday. I actually had a bit of a shock last night. It was obviously Saturday and I thought, I haven't done my normal weekly update for the week ahead because it didn't feel like the end of the week, if you like. So, just on the old exercise bike, coffee, and thought I'd jump on and, and answer the million dollar question, which is why are diets so hard to stick to? And the, the research would say that they kind of are and kind of aren't. It depends how you define it as success. And I could go off on many tangents on this one today. And I might need to stop pedaling at some time. I have just done a faster stint. So let's bring it back to basics and say that diets, in a nutshell, are hard to stick to. Morning, Rachel, because if you ask someone what the best way of eating is. This is just one of the reasons, by the way. I'm gonna go into many. Like, what's healthy? Most people will say that they know what to do. And most people, if they did what they already knew, would actually get pretty good results. But sticking to it is, is the hard part, and that's what we're talking to now, about now. And if I, when I speak to people and I say, you know, okay, what, what's your food like? What's your diet like? And they say, yeah, my, my meals are fine. I know what to do. You know, um, and but they all say things that actually can contradict. So what's healthy for you might not be, might be the opposite of what I define as healthy. So I can speak to one person, they'll say, yeah, I'm really healthy, I'm vegan, I don't eat any meat, so I'm not really sure where I'm going wrong. I speak to someone else and they say, yeah, I'm really healthy, I eat lots of fish, I eat lots of vegetables, I eat lean meats, so I'm not really sure where I'm going wrong. I speak to someone else and they say, yeah, I'm really good, I don't eat any sugar, I don't eat any fruit, so I'm not really sure where I'm going wrong. I speak to someone else, they say, yeah, I eat loads of fruit and veg, so I'm not really sure where I'm going wrong. And what I'm saying here is there's so many different things here, and they all, they all can, can be good. And the problem with this is that we're then almost loyal to this one method, whether it's keto, whether it's vegan, whether it's carnival, whether it's low carb, we become very loyal to this one method and it becomes kind of an on-off switch then. And we think that, you know, this is the only way that we need to eat for it, us to be on it. And the problem with that psychologically is obviously there can be times where this might not happen and then there's going to be challenges in terms of conflict in our head that we failed and we haven't been successful here. That can then lead us to that our effort mindset. And I spoke yesterday a bit about how your, that voice in our head will like us in that situation to sometimes be a bit more, it would like us to say, okay, you've messed up, so you now have no willpower, you have no, you can't do it. It would love that, but actually you can flip it and say, this is a great opportunity to show that I'm in control here. I'm not saying mess up on purpose or, you know, do whatever, but it is a great opportunity to go, actually, yeah, I'm just going to prove that the next meal, the next choice I have to exercise, I'm going to take charge and make the decision that I want to make, whether that is a yes or a no, whether that's a yes, I have that, yes, no, I'm choosing not to, whatever, whatever the question and the answer is that makes you happy, you happy, as that's the most important thing. Now, where do a lot of these diets come from also? So you've got to look at, you know, you, you see things like DNA diets pop up on Facebook feeds and and they have pretty much no real research on that is as proven as they say it is. And that's just the truth. Like, you might as well say, it's raining outside, people have umbrellas, umbrellas cause the rain. That's about as strong as the, the data would show. And you can, and what it actually tells you anyway, is often things that you probably know anyway. So it might just say, you know, you need to eat more fruit and veg. But if it says something like, don't eat tomatoes, I'd really question, or don't eat this food, I'd really question where that data come from. You know, there's real experts in the nitty gritty of this stuff going, like we're miles away from that. And then you see something like 
a DNA diet and you think, oh, that sounds, sounds sciencey. But the unfortunate truth is it works off a placebo effect. It works off the effect that if you get told that your DNA, I'm just being honest, told by your DNA, it needs to eat this certain way. You might actually stick to it for a bit longer because you think this is the way. But then we go back to that circle, that cycle that I spoke about at the start. So whenever you come away from that, so let's say you do eat tomatoes because you want, I'm just using tomatoes because that came up on someone's before. Um, you have a spag bowl or something. You're now more worried about the tomatoes you've eaten. Then it's like, oh, fail now. My DNA doesn't like that. And the problem with that is, is like I said, we then don't have our diet. It's not our diet. Even though we've had a DNA diet, we haven't chosen that to stick to. And as long as you apply to the principle of a calorie deficit, you're going to get the results you want. So then it becomes that down to, nearly every study shows this, the level of support that someone gets in it, whether that's accountability, whether that's knowledge, whether that's check-ins, whether that's a group of like-minded people. Because actually, and, th and that's some things that a lot of diets actually do do well. But the ones where you're just kind of given supplement, given an app, and that's it. And there's no like live interaction, I would say it's going to struggle a bit. And I'll be honest, we, I've done something like that before for a short period of time. And I just didn't get anything from it, like from as a coach point of view, because it was just not like it was just, you know, there's an app and you just know that people actually need more than that. Otherwise, you would just do it. And the thing is that people don't just do it, right? We we have that support, that kind of bit. It's hard to change. We have to sometimes think about, accept that, what, whether it's a friend just keeping you accountable, it can be anyone. Because doing it on your own, doing it on your own is hard. You, ha you need to rely on that motivation if you are, that, that real strong why that you may have and you need to get clear on to have that motivation. So going back to diets, going back to why we fail, we also have... If you look at why many diets fail, we also have our bodies almost fighting us at the same time, telling us to eat more and go back to the body fat level that you were at. So if you lose a bit of weight, lose a bit of fat, your body will start to, body will start to fight that. You have hunger hormones then being higher, leptin, which is essentially meant to be the hormone in terms of why we we struggle maybe to, to stick to things because those urges get higher, etc. But the research then shows if you try and manipulate a hormone, it, your body just counteracts it. Your body's too smart for that. So what can you do? Well, you, you can make better choices in terms of higher protein foods. Adding in resistance exercise can help. And exercise in general so that you're changing body shape. That can have a bit of a less reliance on the scales. You can also have less reliance on actually knowing that actually, yeah, my clothes are fitting better. I'm getting stronger. Our focus isn't just on the weight here. And that's a really strong, strong thing to have in your toolbox. Just to go, yeah, you know, the scales haven't gone my way this week. But actually, I'm stronger. And something's changing. If I'm getting stronger, I'm sorry, but something's changing. Even if you just put the winds to bone density. Even if you put the winds to less risk of falls, less risk of breaking a bone, which, let's face it, break a bone, bed rest, muscle loss, body fat gain, all these things. And that's why, you know, if you look at NHS and the cost of falls and etc., that's why they're so, there's such a high amount of research going into sarcopenia, which is muscle loss with age in terms of quality of life. I have gone off on a massive tangent here, haven't I? I have, indeed. I was talking about why diets, diets fail. Let's go back to it. So, um, but yeah, that's because muscle is a great way to also keep you focused and, and keep it off long term. You may, you'll get a bit of a metabolic hit from that, but it's also adding in the calorie deficit but from the training that goes into it, from the recovery that goes into it as well. And it can be quite enjoyable for some, some people seeing progress. You know, we'd love to see progress, which can, which can also help us stick to it, rather than just the scales as the progress. So, I hope that helps in there. 
And the key thing that I'm getting at is it has to be your diet. And this could be as simple as like, this could be as simple as going, right, I know that my, my situation is, isn't my meals, it's not this, it's just what I eat after 7 p.m. That is it. So we don't really need to go on a keto diet, go on this, go on this diet. We just need to go, right, am I actually nourishing my body enough in the day, getting enough protein, getting enough veggies in, maybe getting enough carbohydrates in? I said the C word. Because later on, we're then overshooting because we're maybe lacking a bit of dopamine, feel good from food, maybe it's not giving us what we want from it. Then as a result of that, later on, we're eating more when actually we were then looking at Oh, maybe we need to start a whole new diet. But when actually we just need to manipulate their meals. And that's a simple change that you can actually do today. So, morning, Carolyn. I hope that helps. I will start pedaling a bit faster now. And if I shut my eyes, I can hear the rain. It feels like I'm out in the Caribbean. I'm next to the, <laughs> next to the radiator and there's a storm. And I'm cycling through it. The imagination. There you go. Simulator. Anyway, have a lovely Sunday. Any questions? Speak soon. Kids still not up. So, win. Speak soon. Take care.